Hello everyone, this is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar, We're continuing our discussion of pathophysiology and uh, continuing along the lines of just some introductory material. Uh, we're going to be talking about the cellular environment and probably spend a, at least a couple of videos on the cellular environment. And I just want to talk about normal cell physiology for a minute, even though we've had it, just kind of refresh everyone and get us kind of on the same page and uh, get us used to some of the basic uh, concepts. Um, so let's just talk about the cell. The cell is, is the the basic unit of life, or the basic unit of, of, of biological life in, in, in the human body. And as we know, certain cells have certain specialized functions. Um, all cells, with the exception of platelets and mature, I believe mature white uh, leukocytes, uh, or red blood cells, um, have three major components. They have a cell membrane, and we'll talk a little bit about the cell membrane in depth. They have a nucleus that uh, contains the genetic material, the deoxyribonucleic acid, or the DNA, and they're filled with cytoplasm, and within that cytoplasm exist uh, what are known as organelles, and these organelles are um, analogous to the organs inside of a, a macroscopic object like a human body. The organs all have uh, specialized functions. Well, the organelles of a cell have a specialized function as well. So we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about these um, in, a, in a little more depth. Uh, I do want to go ahead and just emphasize that there are certain cells that do not have these structures and of course uh, the, the two cells that we look at in the human body would be a red blood cell. The red blood cell does contain a cell membrane uh, but it does not contain any organelles uh, or nuclear material per se. Basically, it's a it's a, a plasma membrane surrounding hemoglobin. Um, and of course, we all know we should be able to appreciate the importance of hemoglobin if you're going into respiratory care. Is is the the protein uh, quaternary uh, structure level uh, quaternary uh, level uh, protein, a protein with quaternary level structure um, that transports oxygen. Uh, so red blood cells uh, don't have all these organelles. Uh, platelets, of course, we know are, are basically cell fragments um, that are that clump together and are involved in the, the clotting process, making clots. One of the first uh, lines of defense, if you will, in uh, hemostasis or, con uh, or um, controlling bleeding. But for the most part, most of what we call the eukaryotic cells, these are cells in plants and animals, um, eukaryotic, prokaryotic would be a different type of cell, and they're much older, they've been around a lot longer, and, and an example of a prokaryotic cell would be a bacteria. They're different. I'm talking about eukaryotic cells. Okay, so let's just go ahead and talk about some of the basic uh, organelles within the cell. So here I have a real kind of a rough drawing, a little rough diagram that I did, and I have a cell here, and in the center of the cell, or near the center of the cell, I have a nucleus. The nucleus has its own membrane, and within the nucleus is, is contained the genetic material, the DNA. Now, the way I look at this is I think of, um, if I want to build a, uh, make a building, and I make a blueprint for that building, I draft a blueprint, do I necessarily want to take the original blueprint out to the the construction site to make uh, that building. Well, no, I don't, because if that blueprint gets damaged, then I'm kind of out of luck, and I can't do any more building. Well, that is very similar to what happens in a cell, is the DNA in the nucleus is a blueprint. Now, the cell needs to make, uh, manufacture things, so the cell can run and, and repair, rebuild, and uh, make proteins, and do all the things that the cell needs to do, However, it would be very bad that if the DNA were to leave the nucleus and get damaged somehow, uh, the cell would no longer be able to function. So instead, what the, the cell does is it does something called transcription, where the DNA is transcribed. It's turned into messenger RNA. It's like a copy. Basically, you make a carbon copy of the blueprint, if you will, and then that copy the RNA, the messenger RNA, travels along another organelle called the um, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, 
the rough endoplasmic reticulum is basically like a highway in a cell, if you want to look at it that way. Um, the RNA travels along this little highway, and then on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, we have little, um, if you were to look at this under a microscope, um, you have little dots, and these little dots are called ribosomes. And what the ribosomes do is they actually um, read the RNA. Um, they're like little readers. The RNA goes through there, they read the RNA, and it tells them what to manufacture. And they'll go ahead and make proteins uh, for the most part. Um, now, a lot of these, these kind of these, these proteins and these carbohydrates and all the stuff that the cell makes that it needs, if it doesn't need them right away, what it can do is it can store them in another organelle here called the uh, Golgi complex, and that's right here. Okay, so there we have what goes on here uh, with the nucleus, um, with tr uh, uh, making RNA, transcribing the RNA uh, by the ribosomes. And um, that's how the cell kind of makes, uh, makes stuff for itself, if you will. Okay, we have a couple of other organelles as well. We have something called uh, lysosomes here. And these are, are little um, vacuoles filled with digestive enzymes. This is how the, sometimes the cell uh, needs to digest things or break things down uh, and uh, metabolize or catabolize things. Um, that happens through the agency of the lysome. Sometimes the cell can actually secrete whatever what, what, what the um, enzymes inside of these lysomes secrete uh, to the external environment, and that can cause uh, a whole variety of interesting things to occur. Uh, sometimes when we talk about pathophysiology, if the cell is damaged, these lysomes can actually um, become leaky and leak the enzymes into the cytoplasmic membrane itself, and that can, of course, damage or destroy the cell. Okay, um, we also have uh, mitochondria, very incredibly important organelle. M mitochondria is known as a powerhouse of the cell. It's where most of the energy is produced. Um, we do know that glucose enters the cell through um, a channel, through what's called facilitated diffusion, and of course uh, insulin facilitates the movement of glucose in. There is a cycle called glycolysis that occurs right at the cell membrane, where basically glucose is broken down to pyruvic acid. A little bit of energy is made anaerobically, not a whole lot. And then the pyruvic acid is then turned into acetyl-coenzyme A, and the acetyl-CoA uh, then goes through another cycle called the Krebs cycle. Inside of the mitochondria here, um, the Krebs cycle go, uh, basically breaks um, carbons and hydrogens off of uh, the... <clears throat> excuse me, off of the acetyl-CoA, and the hydrogens then go uh, to another system known as uh, oxidative phosphorylation, or the electron transport chain, and that's actually where we use oxygen um, in the, e the electron transport chain, that's where most of our energy is produced, and um, of course, through the Krebs cycle, because we're, we're pulling a bunch of uh, carbons off, we actually produce carbon dioxide as a waste, and then oxygen is used in oxidative phosphorylation or the electron transport chain to um, basically act kind of like a garbage truck and to kind of suck up the um, electrons and hydrogens uh, or protons at that point that are left over to make water molecules. So a lot of important stuff when we talk about ma manufacturing adenosine triphosphate occurs in the uh, mitochondria. Uh, another structure that uh, we should be aware of is a little star-like uh, star column known as a centriole. The centrioles are um, are essential in uh, cell binding or what we call mitosis uh, uh, cell division and uh, play an important role in stabilizing little filaments break off and actually stabilize a cell as it, as it divides. And we'll talk a little bit more about cell division a little later on. I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys a basic um, idea, a basic uh, an look at the anatomy and physiology um, and the organelles of the cell. Okay guys, thanks for hanging in there and we'll see you on the next video.